Why I kept buying these after I knew I had too many, God only knows. <laughs> hey folks, it's Abby, and today I'm going to be going through the intimidating books that are still on my TBR shelves. So I have quite a few of these, and a fair number of them are because of the size. There's two that are not because of the size on here. And seven out of the ten of them are historical fictions. I used to be a lot more into historical fiction when I was younger. I think I need to start leaning away from that genre, <laughs> considering how many of the intimidating ones are in there. Let's first of all go through the fantasy books that are intimidating, and then we'll go through the historical fictions in chronological order of their time setting. So first up is American Gods by Neil Gaiman. This is the author's preferred text, meaning it is absolutely massive. <laughs> I picked this up um, for me and my partner. My partner has since finished the book. It is 600 odd pages. I've read two books by Gaiman before. They were both short, The Ocean at the End of the Lane and Stardust. I liked them both, but they were both short. So I am scared of this one. <laughs> um, but we'll see. It's set in the United States. Days before his release from prison, Shadow's wife, Laura, dies in a mysterious car crash. And he then meets the enigmatic Mr. Wednesday, who claims to be a refugee from a distant war, a former god, and the king of America. Which sounds absolutely ridiculous, and it sounds great, and I'm scared to read it. One day, one day. I think my partner really enjoyed it as well, so maybe actually living with him and having me like, have you read it yet, might push me to actually put this one up. And then another big one, and that is War Storm by Victoria Aveyard. This is the last book in the Red Queen series. This one is because it's long and because of the series. It's both together. This is a fantasy series where people have red blood or silver blood. If you've got red blood, you're common and you're used as a slave. Silver blood, you have magical powers um, and you get treated as royalty, essentially. There are actual royalty, but you know. And then this girl with red blood has magical powers. And it goes from there. And this is a big book, don't get me wrong. It is 660 pages with small writing and the other books that I've read, which have been shorter, I have been very slow to get through. Instead of this book taking me six and a half hours, which is what it should take because I read 100 pages in an hour, this is going to take me at least 10 hours to read. And that is like so, so off-putting, knowing that I'm a slow reader through Aveyard's writing style anyway, and it's a big book. One day I'm just going to have to sit down and read it. I don't know if I'll do the kind of chapter a day scenario or what. I'll have to do something. But yeah, this is big and intimidating at the same time. And then for the last fantasy book, this one is actually decently small. It is only 400 pages. And that is This Savage Song by V.E. Schwab. I tried to read this, it put me in a massive slump, and I DNF'd it. And the only other V.E. Schwab book I've read is A Darker Shade of Magic, and I still don't know if that's a two star or a four star. And that's why this is intimidating, because I love Schwab as a person from what I've seen of her online, I met her at a signing, from what I've seen of that she seems so lovely, but her writing style I'm worried won't gel with me, so I'm scared of picking this one up. And those are all of the fantasy books. So now, historical. So my battery died, I had a break, I ate some cheese and biscuits, let's get back to it. Starting off with the Furthest back in history we have the Eagle of the Ninth Chronicles. This is Roman times in the British Isles. Written by Rosemary Sutcliffe, I have actually read the first book in this because it's a bind up of three books. So this is not intimidating because of its size. This is intimidating because I remember reading the first book and struggling through it. Really, really struggling through the first book. And I finally got into it right near the end. I didn't know it was near the end, because when I started reading it I hadn't realised it was three books. I was interested for like this, and then it ended and I was so miffed. And so that, that's why I hadn't picked it up in a while. But it's intimidating because I know that I struggled through the first one. So I'm probably going to struggle through the second and third ones. Don't know, could be different. I read this obviously as a kid, uh, a young teenager, so possibly as an adult it could be easier to get through. But that is why it's intimidating. It's just me. Then we have The Pillars of the Earth by Ken Follett. This is set in the 1200s in the English Civil War. I really like the English Civil War. Um, I read the Blanford Candy books that I, I loved so much by Jamal Evans that no one's heard of and they're great. Historical fiction with a lot of comedy. This is intimidating because it's big. 
th that's it. I kept it because I liked the Civil War, the cover's pretty, I've read some of another Ken Follett book which is coming up later. Next up is some Tudor Times and we have Three Sisters Three Queens by Philippa Gregory. If you don't know who that is, you're definitely not British. That is King Henry VIII who had six wives. Divorce beheaded died, divorce beheaded survive. I'm Henry VIII, I had six sorry wives. wives. Some might say I ruined their, their lives. lives. <laughs> Model history is so odd. This is something that I picked up because I like the cover and because I'd heard of Philippa Gregory. My little brother Kane bought me it, thank you very much. It's like 500 odd pages and it's historical fiction and I've heard that Philippa Gregory is very romance heavy in her books and that's not something that I love. Then we've got Elias Grace by Margaret Atwood. This is set in the 1840s and is based on the true story of a young Canadian woman who was possibly a murderer. We don't know. I grabbed this because it was by Margaret Atwood and we're going free at work on a little table so I was like I might as well pick that up. I've been tempted to unhaul it a couple of times but it was actually published in 1996 which is the year I was born so I've kept it. <laughs> and I'd like to read it one day. I think Caitlin from My Cheshire Rabbit has got this as well so maybe we'll buddy read it at some point to get through it. But yes, um, it's big. Now for that other Ken Follett I mentioned. Fall of Giants. <laughs> This is set in the First World War. It's the first book in the Century Trilogy. First one does First World War, Second World War and the Cold War from inception to possibly end? I don't know, I'll find out. And it's from a human point of view, it's not like an overarching thing, it, it's following individuals. This one is intimidating for a few reasons. One is that it's 850 pages. Two is that I have tried to read it, I am 380 pages through it, and I struggle with this. Um, probably just because it's big and because I don't feel like I'm making much progress. So this is actually going to be my new like chapter a day book. So that's how I'm going to get through this one. It's big. Also I own the other two already which then makes it feel more intimidating because I have three books that big. <sighs> then my penultimate one is set in World War II and that is All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Dyer. I have had this on my TBR for years now. This is actually on probably the first ever five star prediction video that I did. It's also the only five star prediction video that I did because I don't feel like I can do another one until I've read all the books on it and I haven't read this yet. Literally, I think I filmed that in what, 2018? Um, this has just over 500 pages. I had read a teeny weeny bit of it, uh, 19 pages, oh, um, and it's very floppy for an English book. It's very, very floppy. It's about a blind girl, I believe. Yes, blind since the age of six and she's living in Paris during the World War. The second one was very much my thing when I was younger, less so my thing now, so if you were going to ask me if I'd predict this to be a five star now, the answer is no. Should I just then just leave the five star prediction and make more? I don't know but I haven't read this yet. The last book that I have on this list I have also started. I am 220 pages into it and that is 112263 by Stephen King. I read those 200 pages in 2019, November, December of 2019. The modern day parts are set in 2011, so not historical fiction, it's not quite that point yet, um, but he then travels back in time to 1963 where he then tries to stop the Kennedy assassination. I've read one Stephen King book before this, that was The Outsider, which I think I gave four stars. It had a lot of issues, but I also enjoyed it. And then I will have read, before I read this, The Bazaar of Bad Dreams, which is a collection of short stories. This will most likely be the last Stephen King book I ever pick up. I don't think I'm ever going to read any more from him, but I have invested enough that I would like to still continue with this with this book and finish it and obviously it's a really well known one so I'd like to know and like read it for myself and see what happens but yes it's big how big is that one? Oh no oh no it's about 750 pages fuck well it's a good job I finished my cheese and biscuits because this just landed on the plate <laughs> fuck's sake so stacking them up again those are my most intimidating books. So only two of them are not because of size. It should tell you a lot. I mean, if I do it this way, you can actually see the spines. Helpful. Um, 
So yes, these are the most intimidating books that I have on my TBR. As I've mentioned, I'm going to be reading a chapter a day of Fall of Giants, so that one is being read through very slowly. But other than that, please let me know which book you think I should pick up first out of all of these, um, and that you think I would enjoy the most, and let me know the book that you're most intimidated by on your TBR. Thank you so much for watching folks, if you enjoyed the video please do hit like, and if you'd like to see some more from me then please do hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Thank you.